Welcome to a Wednesday edition of Big Blue Kickoff Live presented by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle of the New York football giants. Thanks so much for being with us. My name is Madeline Burke alongside the Super Bowl champion Howard Cross. Whoop, whoop. The phone number here is 201-939-4513 or you can find us on Twitter at hashtag Giants Chat. And as a reminder, you can find the archive of this show and our entire podcast network on the Giants mobile app, on podcast platforms everywhere and at Giants.com slash podcast Howard we're officially on the back nine it is week (laughs) 10 second half of the season is upon us the second Mm -hmm, half of the season mm -hmm. starting with a trip to Germany as the Giants are taking on the Panthers in Munich on Sunday 9 30 a.m kickoff on Sunday morning local time um this is going to be an interesting you know the international series is always fun the Giants are three and oh overseas in the regular season which is a a fun stat but you (laughs) have uh you have been to Germany with the Giants previously yes we have like uh we played a preseason game against the Chargers back in that I think it was like 97 ish or right around that time and we were in actual Berlin uh we we were practicing and doing um most of our workouts in the uh and on the field where Jesse Owens actually won his gold medals I actually went up and stood in the lane and got down on my stance, and people were looking at me weird. I'm like, so Jesse Owens is right here, dude. This is his lane. They're like, what? I'm like, don't you realize what what stadium we're in? So it's it a was historic a cool, moment. A cool moment for me. I mean, I think that was the, the biggest part of the whole trip. I, I don't remember much about the game, or I know it was the Chargers, or I don't remember much about anything else. I just remember that, wow, you know, I was standing where Jesse Owens stood and, and ran. And you know, made history. Made history. That that just was was overwhelming to me, and I was like, "Wow, that's that's crazy." All the other stuff where they wanted to go see and everything was was cool. Uh, I didn't really go see a lot of sites. I just like every time. I, like the best thing today is that we have camera phones. We can take pictures of everything instantly. Mm-hmm. Back then, you had to have like a little, you know, <laughs> you know, take a film. <laughs> you got a finger in the way. You don't yeah. know it until a month later when you develop it. Oh yeah. shoot! Yeah, <laughs> it was, that that was that was probably my biggest coolest moment. Probably one of the coolest things in my career. That is cool. And this will yeah. be a really interesting and, and unique experience for this Giants team. Um, we talk about it a lot, that the fact that you're just going away for these longer trips is such mm-hmm. a team-building experience. You know, when the team goes away during training camp together for, you know, a joint practice at another c- city or something mm-hmm. like that, these... And, and not that this locker room is in, in any way fractured or anything, but, you know, when you've got the adversity of the season that you're having, it's nice to have something to kind of bring you guys together for this home stretch of the season and say, okay, you know what, we're still in this as a squad. Well, you know, yes, and I think it's the it's the alternative to the old school training camp. In training camp, we used to go go away and stay in dorms and sleep in these little tiny cots and, and be together for like, you know, five or six weeks of training camp. And now these it's turned into, like, you know, like you said, uh, practice against another squad uh going on these trips uh, you know, out of the country which is really cool and i think that you know you know american fans probably won't realize but germany they are a big super fan of the giants which is really odd that that that, that country just seems to be like big giants fans and and they said that the from what i understand i was listening just a second ago hopefully i'm not misquoting the tickets sold out an hour after they brought up that they were going to play there which is really crazy that's incredible and if you want you can check out john schmelk on a recent episode of the giants huddle podcast recently talked to marcus kuhn about just the fan base in germany (laughs) and how excited they are um about the giants and and nfl coming to germany and Mm -hmm. it's cool to hear somebody who you know is german is from (laughs) there who has roots there has played in the nfl and and has seen both sides of it to represent just how much of an impact this is because i think we here you know in the united states are thinking okay this is you know, a game that perhaps isn't, you know, America's game of the week this mm-hmm. week. Nope. But, you know, if if in the U.S., if you've got, you know, Barcelona or Real Madrid or Arsenal or some of the premier teams when Messi comes to play. playing in, in the it. United States, <laughs> you're not really concerned with what their record is as much as, wow, this is a really great opportunity to see one of the storied franchises yep. in these leagues overseas in their football. And so they are seeing one of the storied franchises in our football in the New York football giants playing on Sunday um, in Munich. So it'll be, it'll be a good one. But of course the giants are starting their practice week right now. They're on the practice field or Mm -hmm. they're about to get on the practice field soon. They will be flying out Thursday night and uh, so practice. Yeah. You guys are going practice Thursday, fly out Thursday night, do your best to sleep on the plane because landing Friday, you're starting the day going to practice. (laughs) adjusting to the hours my uh sympathy is with you for fighting that jet lag for a few days um but getting updates from the press conference right now and the schedule's full by the way and oh yeah i'm sure it's back to back to back to back Mm -hmm. because you know what you want to make the most of that time 
Uh, an update, though, for practice today. Mm-hmm. Bryce Ford Wheaton out of practice. Dexter Lawrence out. Dex probably getting a vet day, as he usually does on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. Darius Slayton still in the concussion protocol. Um, he's uh, uh, Brian Dable says he's not as far along as Tyrone Tracy was at this point in the week. So mm. he might not travel to Germany, but that is still not decided. So Darius wow. Slayton still not decided whether he'll travel to Germany. Um, Greg Van Roten dealing with a shoulder injury. Mm-hmm. He's not going to practice today. Um, and then, of course, Nick McLeod, he was released on Tuesday ahead of the trade deadline. Mm. Um, so he uh, is not going to be there. But Art Green has been called up to replace McLeod. Yep. Uh, Graham Gano, his practice window is open, returning from IR. He's been dealing with that injury. So we'll see if we get Graham Gano back in time for Germany or if it'll be Jude Mc- McAtomi mm-hmm. uh, once again. And then Matt Hawk, the punter that has been filling in for Jamie Gillen, has been sent to the practice squad. And the plan is for Gillen to return to his punting duties, the Scottish Hammer <laughs> returning. And that's good that he's feeling better then. So these are the injury updates from Dable's presser and rapid fire succession. What do you make of that? I, you know, I think it's interesting that, that we that they let McLeod go. I, I think that, you know, the fact that uh, the, the secondary has been very, very sparse, to say the least, with, with players being available because of guys being injured, nicked up. I think they got flat back last week, which was a good thing. Uh, maybe that's a maybe it's a good thing. Maybe they feel like he's going to make it through the rest of the season. He's going to be feeling that good, and I hope that he does. Uh, they, they brought a couple guys up from the training, uh, from the practice squad as well. But you know, having a veteran that you've had in there a couple of years and letting him go is it's a little interesting. But you know, I guess the numbers just don't match. Right. Yeah. There was a, you know, there was some talk about negotiation about restructuring the contract that that didn't work out. And so they, you know, moved on and uh, we'll see how they kind of make do for the remainder. He'll probably wind up with somebody, you know, teams are going to teams are short DBs all over the all over the league. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, um, yeah, getting a. Getting um, excuse me, getting Mm -hmm. Graham Gano back this week, you know, this is like input output at the same time it's not as easy as it looks folks <laughs> getting Graham Gano back um with that hamstring injury of course you know they've seen some ups and downs with Greg Joseph and mm-hmm. um and young Jude and all that uh getting Graham Gano back at, at a healthy clip will be mm-hmm. helpful for this Giants team well you know message to Graham Gano if you kick the ball and it doesn't go into the end zone and the guy starts to run it back stop don't move <laughs> don't stretch don't do anything just let him go by and be like wave at him hey I'll get you next time and let it go don't chase anybody you're too old <laughs> 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 don't hurt them all right uh giants fans make sure you go and subscribe to the giants huddle podcast it features long form interviews with giants players coaches front office staff past and present plus hear from the best analysts covering big blue and the nfl search for giants huddle and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or simply go to giants.com slash podcasts and don't forget if you are an apple podcast Go ahead and leave a five-star positive review for all of our Giants podcasts. Like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think. You know the deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, We always appreciate your positive feedback. 201-939-4513 is the phone number. Let's head to the phone lines because Cliff in New York was eager. I heard that phone ring right as the show started. What's up, Cliff? And appreciate you calling in this afternoon. Cliff, how's it going? Hey, I'm I'm doing well, thanks. And it's good to hear from you guys. Uh, Listen, I, I, I'm very encouraged by what happened the last two weeks uh, on the offensive side. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I was really impressed with what we did in Pittsburgh. I mean, we, I guess uh, part of the, what went wrong there was also on the offense, but, but the production, you know. Uh, and then to come home and do it, you know, we're not supposed to be able to score a touchdown at home. We did three. <laughs> And Daniel's not supposed to be able to play at home. He did extremely well. He even won the post-game player of the game, which is, you know, quite an honor. Let's let's face it. You yep. know that. And and um, uh, I'm concerned that um, Darius might not be able to make the trip. I was prepared for that possibility. Uh, we sure have a deep enough group to do something to make up for that. And I, I hope Ford Wheaton. Uh, might be able to get a shot. It doesn't sound promising right now, but um, uh, maybe it's maybe it's Hyatt's day finally. Who knows? Uh, but um, Daniel, mm-hmm. <laughs> what, you know, when when he ran over those guys on the goal line, I said, <laughs> I hope I hope somebody notices this. And the mentions I've heard so far didn't mention who the second guy was that he ran over. 
it was none other than the strip sack guy, Dante Fowler. As best, <laughs> yep. as best I could tell. You know, it sure looked like number six tumbling over and then pounding the turf like he thought he did something wrong. But either way, the man got beat. And, um, you know, it reminds me that in Joe's, Joe's first, Shane's first press conference, uh, somebody asked him, what do you think about uh, Daniel Jones? And the very first thing he said, as I recall it, was, he can run. <laughs> and, and, and I thought, and then that season, um, I was watching a game. That, that season was, uh, was Daniel's first really good season, the mm-hmm. playoff season. And I was watching a game in the middle of that season, I think, and it, and it was Mahomes against, um, against Josh Allen. And I'm looking at and I'm saying, well, uh, you know, I'm watching these guys run. And I say, well, no, you wouldn't compare Daniel to the way these guys run. Mm-hmm. But you can compare Daniel to their production with their legs. You can. Okay. And, 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 uh, and I was talking on the show recently, the guys didn't like it, that I like the way he runs f- flat into people. Uh, <laughs> I don't and, like that. No. That's you not, don't like that, that part? No, that's not smart. Preservation <laughs> of health is, uh, is on the line Self, there. Self-preservation <laughs> is high on my list of things. Yeah. Well, I don't know if the team likes it the way they did when Brandon Jacobs and Jeremy Shock. Diff- different position. Yeah. Different position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, thank you for your call. That was that's really you, cool. Yeah. We love hearing some positive and, uh, energy there. And I got to say, you know, on the post game show this week, Sean and I were talking about that goal line run. <laughs> and I, what I said to Sean, I said, you know what? Listen, the way that this man ran into the end zone was with such a fury that I feel like he's going to have to be acknowledged on Tuesday morning on NFL Network <laughs> on Good Morning Football. And what do you know? They did. The winner of Angry Runs in Week 9 is none other than Sir Daniel Jones. Yeah, he, uh, he did a good job, man. Sir Dan- <laughs> I just knighted him with the scepter right That's there awesome. because <laughs> Daniel Jones won Angry Runs on that run, and it was an incredible gutsy. You know, the fact that mm-hmm. he, like like Cliff said, he likes that he just runs right into these guys, and he didn't take no for an answer. No. Two defenders down. He said, no, 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 I'm getting in the end zone throws the ball and says boom i am sick of this yeah howard are you okay with that at the goal line yeah but no don't don't run into anybody if you can help it you're a quarterback i appreciate the the, idea the sentiment you're a big dude now Mm -hmm. i don't take nothing from you but people remember that they like i hope he runs again (laughs) you know that's that's the way dudes think so i you know don't don't run into people if you can help it get out of their way just you know step out of bounds usually but he didn't. He didn't need to get the score, and I appreciate him giving up the body for that one one play. Daniel, look out for yourself, dog. Easy. We'll allow it. <laughs> we'll allow it. I did like to though. So I mean, earlier in the season, the narrative around this team was a lot like, um, "Hey, the defense is doing enough to put this team in a position to win, but the offense needs to score points. The offense needs to get in the end." So this week, Daniel Jones threw two passing touchdowns at MetLife Stadium. He ran in for another touchdown. They scored. They were able to score some points. Dexter Lawrence, after the game, said, hey, the offense did enough to put us in a position to win. The defense needed to step up. You know, it, it's hard to get both sides. It's kind of like my golf game. You know, <laughs> my, my irons the long are, ball and then the putt in the My short irons game. are working. My woods are not. My woods are working. My irons are not. My woods my irons are working. Now I can't putt. It, it's always something. <clears throat> always something. What, the way I believe they should do is, like, you know, go into this game as the opportunity is, okay, you, you, you have a great history, right? Uh, you've never lost over 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 o- across the pond. Never so, lost. So, never ever lost. So, <laughs> go over there and let's do the get right moment. Mm-hmm. Make everything as positive as possible. You know, defense shut them out. Try to try to keep the other team from not just scoring. I know you do it every week, but literally shut them out. It'd be would be awesome. And as far as the offense goes, the offense has got to try to put as many points up as possible. I know Burns is going to be over there. Having a field day, running after yeah, against after, his former team. Yeah, his former team. You know, first round <laughs> draft pick. Uh, that that first overall. Uh, you know, they, I mean, love that kid, but I hope he he better duck because they're going to be coming after him. Well, and the Panthers haven't officially said it'll be Bryce. I mean, it's expected that it mm-hmm. would be, especially because mm-hmm. he's coming off a win. He's looking yep. for his first back to back wins in his career. But yep. Andy Dalton is, you know, is healthy. So there, there are there, there's rumors. There yeah. are questions, and whether it's gamesmanship or not. Um, well, I mean, if it were me and I was and I were doing it, I'd probably start Dalton. I think that Dalton probably gives him a better chance of winning. Uh, I, I don't, you know, nothing against Bryce Young because I love him, roll tide the whole nine yards. But if it were me, mm-hmm. you know, and I know that that we're trying to pull something together positive, 
I, I will start Dalton. Would you start? Okay, but looking at the record of this season, looking at what's realistically attainable, you'd start Dalton over a number one overall pick, coming off a win in which you put together an incredible fourth quarter, and mm-hmm. you're saying, okay, let's build this confidence and see if we can get the most and maximize the potential of this young quarterback? Well, here's why. I would be, if, I, if it was me and I'm Carolina, and I don't know ownership, it's a lot of things being said. If it was me and it was Carolina, I would probably look to try to trade Bryce Young and see what I could get for him. Okay. And if you have him playing and somebody gets to well, him. Well, the trade deadline was yesterday. I know. So. But, but, you know, I would have, that's what I would have done, though. Got it. That's okay. what I would have done. Now that he's just there, I mean, it's a head coach. You have to make a decision. You, know, you go talk to your owner make sure, hey, look, can we try to work with the kid or not? Let, let, let me know what you think because in, in this particular situation, this team, the ownership has a lot of, you know, say of what's happening on the field, what's going on on the field. So it would be better for them to – Go and ask permission to let him continue to play, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is like it's just the third time in his young career Bryce Young has got the win. Mm-hmm. Um, they defeated the Saints 23 22 was the final score, and the Saints subsequently fired their head coach mm-hmm. after the loss. Um, but yeah, Bryce Young has had 20 career starts and has never won back to back games. So. Um, and they just traded away his receiver, too. Right. Yeah. So he's, he, you know, he, I don't know who, if I'm Andy Dalton, I wouldn't want to go back in, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I mean, somebody's got to play quarterback. <laughs> exactly. Um, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how it comes together because, again, you know, this is a team that has struggled this season. Mm-hmm. Um, the Giants offense is, is ranked last in the league. The Giants are among last in the league. The, mm-hmm. the Panthers defense is ranked last in the league. Okay. Um, so you got to be thinking like if you're the Giants looking at this matchup on paper, mm-hmm. it's a pos- positive momentum possibility for this team. I don't know if guys think like this anymore. I used to think like even no, 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 but that's but we can think like yeah, this. But, but when I was playing, I would like like if we're especially if we're having a bad season. I saw a team that was down. I'm like I'm kicking them when they're down. People are kicking us. So like. I'd go out there and try to get as many, you know, pancakes as I could, and and get as many catches as I could, and like I'd try to be in clips of, of film that, that ordinarily I wouldn't be in because like, hey, look, <laughs> look at the camera almost. You just have as much fun as possible because at the end of the day, you want to have fun. And if someone else isn't doing well, that's their problem, not yours. You should go in and try to get as much as you can. Dexter should have two sacks. You know, you know Burn should have a sack. You know, they should be like have four or five sacks during the game. There should be multiple guys that all of a sudden become great receivers out there in the, in this game. Like all of a sudden, you know, this would be a great game for Hyatt to reappear out of nowhere. Like coming, you know, up from the depths of oh no, how's Hyatt? Hope he gets better. And to like man, Hyatt's blowing by guys out there on the field. This is an opportunity for that as well as Malik Neighbors to have you know a, a terrific game. You know, Tracy should be over a hundred yards running. You know, you might have two guys over 100 yards rushing in this game. So it it, it, it it could be that kind of game, but they got to go into it, even though they're flying across the ocean and everything, they got to go into it thinking that way, not get in lo- not fall in love with the trip across the ocean. And, oh, wow, we're in Germany, but be more about business and be more detailed. I mean, a big goal for the game, if it was me, zero drops. Yeah. Zero penalties. Yeah. If penalties they, is a big one. If they could do those two things, right? they would have won – five more games well and it's going to be you know much like seattle in the noise factor because mm-hmm. overseas you know this uh european fans kind of cheer the whole time you know yeah, there's they, no they there's no quiet the offense is at work yeah, they, scenario they, it's loud it's it's cheerful you, you, it's might ruckus. Be, you might be shocked that they they know if, if, if they if they have a team they're rooting for they know to be quiet when the offense is on the field i mean it's not that they don't know it's just a different kind of uh environment it is but like i'm telling you like when the yeah. offense goes on the field i've seen the time that, 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 that there are a majority of giants fans i could see the people in the stands going like like hold it down hold it down right. the offense. i'm like really i'm like okay yeah. i see you guys go ahead go ahead yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how that pans out but like you said the penalties the pre-snap penalties mm-hmm. especially Ugh. Um, and you know, so it's so subjective. We've seen, and if, um, and if we can get a, a set of referees that, that actually know yeah. the actual rules, well, or and, I, that's and like kind of so, killing me. Yeah, it is so subjective because you know, you see Darius Slayton on a you know, what is a pick route getting flagged for a PI, and then you know, another couple of games, you see the exact same yeah, play but, this weekend, and, and there's no call on that. And so, it is one of those things that was well, Slayton's allowed to run his route, exactly. The guy jumped in front of him to try to stop him from running around. Exactly. And his teammate ran into him, and they called a pick on Slayton. And I'm like, wait a minute. 
he's not even trying to pick him. He's trying to get by him. Yeah. That that was amazing to me. I'm like, and yeah. the ref throws the flag so quickly. And he takes a touchdown off the board. Yeah. And I thought Dable, I thought literally that vein that was right here was just going to blow out the side of his head. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, It was not a good moment. And, you know, when you're playing against and you, and the officiating, and, and, and that's and one thing that... You need every play. You need every play. You need to play it clean. But that's, you know, that's something that they've talked about, too, going into the season. It's like every crew calls a game differently. And not only are you studying your opponent, but you're studying the crew and you're studying, okay, this is something that they focus on. This is something that they hone in on. This mm -hmm. is something that we have to be mindful of. These are the things that they kind of let you get away with. Like, for example, in New York City, you walk across the street without the walk light. It's fine. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to call. But in, you know, um, LA. you know, in LA, you do it, you get a ticket for jaywalking. <laughs> and so it's a very different thing. Sometimes you got to just know who's going to call what. And as you're learning that about this crew going into the game, you got to be mindful of that. As unfortunate as it is. Well, here's the other thing. I don't. I don't think fans realize also that there's been a big, a lot of turnover in the officials in the last few years. That's true. A lot of young faces, a lot of new faces out there. So you know, even the coaches and the scouts that they've been doing for you know for the year, they won't have the numbers on them of what they like to call and what they are prone to until the end of the year. Once they, you know, once they got to the end of the year, if they're not a, a, another you know, a bunch of new guys coming in, they'll have scouting reports on the officials and they'll know what to look for. But not even just going into a game. I'm talking about, too, just in the flow of the game. Like, as you're watching they, a they game, you see... a lot see, of flags, man. You know, that Monday night game against Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were a lot of terrible towels on and off the field. We saw that <laughs> yellow flying everywhere. Yeah, so it's yeah. like you get to know the flow of the game and the flow of how things are going um, during as well. Yeah. It, it's it, Like I said, you can't depend on the officials. Right. Win or lose, you just got to play your play your own game. Play your own game. Do your best not to put yourself in a position that those can be uh, overly damning moments. For How about team. our new left tackle that we've kind of brought in? Right. Horton. He is something else. Mm -hmm. I am, you know, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. Can I say it that way? Is that that okay? I hope I hope I'm not offending the young man, but pleasantly surprised. He is playing pretty well. He's holding up out there. At first, I was like, okay, so now we bring guys in off the street. Like, what is going on? And, and now, Horton is doing a good job. I'm, 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 uh, the run game has picked up a little bit. Uh, the pass protection isn't, you know, leaky as as leaky as it was before. It looks it looks pretty solid. That's, I mean, it's good, but it's also, uh, you know, now it's developing that trust in mm – -hmm. um, in the entirety of the line and you know, getting that path. And, and I think one thing that has been helpful though, too, is the way that the Giants established the run early mm -hmm. on. I mean, they had 115 rushing yards in the first quarter on Sunday. If they can continue to run the ball like that, it opens up the pass game so much. The play action pass is so easy for Daniel to get the ball off. The problem is. I mean, that, Hubbard. We, I call him Horton. It's Hubbard. You call him Horton. I thought yeah, it was Hubbard. Sorry. Was it is correct. Hubbard. That's my bad. <laughs> but, um, it's been a long day, friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, already. Uh, but here's what I think I think if. You know, when they, they run the ball and they're so successful at running it, I'm starting to see the, the safety creep down. I'm starting to see the linebackers walk a little closer to the line. The problem is if they run blitz on a play-action pass, there's not enough people to block all those people. So you have to get the ball out so quick, and it's got to be, you know, something that's going to hurt them. Uh, you, you, you can almost throw a slant behind it, but if the guy – expects it to be a run and you don't run, he steps out. He's stepping into the lane of the, of the, of the slant. Mm -hmm. So it almost has to be like out routes or short routes or just quick goes that you're like, okay, we're going to throw it up, go get it kind of moment because it's very hard to throw the ball anywhere near the line of the tackles because guys are like creeping up, creeping up. We got to stop them. We got to stop them. We got to stop them. And then all of a sudden you pull it back to throw and they're like in the line. Some of them will drop back, and some of them are like, "Hey, I'm here already. Let's just keep going." Right. So you have to be careful with it. Right, right. And it's it's that decisive nature too. I think it's something that we've seen recently. Is you know uh, the Steelers game. We talked about this last week on the mm -hmm. show as well. But in the Steelers game, um, Aikman and Buck were talking about how you know DJ kind of likes to hold it and wait until he sees something unfold before letting it go. And the more he trusts and the more he throws with anticipation instead of throwing to the receivers already at the spot, that could be helpful. Yes, yes, and I understand that. And yes, you have to understand what he's been going through for the last, I don't know, five years of, of like poor line play. Valid. Yeah, so like poor line play leads him to, you know, make sure that he's able to release the ball when he sees the guy getting open instead of like, 
okay, I, I have to, he hasn't had time. If he was throwing anticipation in the last three years, he'd have thrown a thousand interceptions. Yeah. Because he's getting hit. Guys are not getting off their getting off their routes, not getting off their getting off their coverage guys to get open. And he's just, just throwing it up in the air. Yeah. So, you know, getting hit in the second step of a three step drop was not going to be helpful for him to get rid of the ball. And I don't think people, and I understand what Aikman is saying. I understand what, what Buck was saying. And I, and I agree with him. Like, he can throw for anticipation because he has a little more time now. But as you watch, even in this, this last game, he was shuffling to the right, shuffling to the left, and then releasing the ball because, you know, when he's ha- he's waiting for them to get open or mm-hmm. to look like they're getting open. And, like, and if you haven't had guys open for a long time, you only trust one guy to throw it up and see if he can catch it in in a scenario like that. And you know, and and I love I love my tight end, but he dropped a couple big plays, two balls, and like that that guy is supposed to be your guy, your safety net guy, and wasn't there. He had a he had a big touchdown in the fourth quarter, but he you're did. right, those moments earlier in the game, and and there was a couple where you could see he just knew that oh that that was that was his right there. i you know I I tell I say this all the time, you know, talking to the producers and stuff. I'm like, listen, we have to have more guys that are willing to catch the ball with their hands, <laughs> as and, opposed to. Catching the ball in your chest. Oh, okay. I see what you mean there. Sorry, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what other body parts you were like, thinking the about. The math is not math in there, right? I'm <laughs> no, like, we just, we just really need, we, we uh, you know, I don't know how to legislate it or anything, but you really need more guys that will reach out and 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 grab the ball instead of doing this and letting it hit them. Right. Yeah. And, it's, this there's, isn't there's, a. Yeah. There's a lot of things that happen when people raking across and mm-hmm. all this other stuff so it's just let's just reach out because you're six foot six six foot seven just you do this yeah you got the ball out here the guy's reaching back here to hit you if he's hitting you back here they're gonna call a penalty likely <laughs> so like <laughs> it's just things like that that i'm you know don't have don't know how to make guys do it don't know how you know you just got to do it just got to do it mm-hmm. 201-939-4513 is the phone number. The phone lines are open if anyone wants to get in and chit-chat on Big Blue Kickoff Live this week. But, Howard, you know, we talk about this matchup on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about the run game. Tyrone Tracy Jr., he's been running incredibly well and decisive. He hit the spin move a couple of times. He's yeah. running through contact with such ferocity. And he's going up against a Carolina defense that's allowing a league-high 159.3 rushing yards per game and 15 rushing touchdowns on the season. Um, that young man is going to be tired. He's, <laughs> you know he's going to be looking at this matchup. But again, you know, as much as Erica Badu, better, you better call Tyrone. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Devin Singletary and Eric Gray and Daniel Jones even, you know, getting involved in the run game and that variety there. But Tracy, absolutely. I mean, leading the Giants, 89 car- carries, 442 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns this season. He's been the bell cow. He has been the bell cow and mm-hmm. he's earned that. Absolutely. I mean, the kid does a good job of like, I've always saw plays, I'm watching them and, and, and there's a hole and I'm like, just hit it. Somebody just burst through it, hit it. And guys stutter their feet or they're, they're maybe trying to do a jump cut. He's the one guy that's going up, he sees the spot and he just tries to run as fast as he can through it to see what happens. And sometimes guys miss him or guys just bounce off him. And when they do, he's like out, out the gate for 25, 35 yards and people are chasing him. If he doesn't get it, mm-hmm. he usually falling forward for a four yard run right which is that's what you want you want if you get four yards every time you run the ball it, it becomes so much easier to play offense right right so you know and i know singletary was a guy we brought in to be that guy but you know the wally pip scenario <laughs> you, you don't don't ever let somebody get on the field because you you know they can pick it up and i think that's inspiring singletary to get extra yards and, and be that guy so you know i'm excited to watch both of them you know get get some carries as far as daniel I love seeing Daniel run. I don't want to see him run a lot, but you know he will become a, more of a weapon now that they have to really pay attention to Tracy. Yeah, yeah. Well, and especially because they know that that's an option. You got to spy yeah. him. I mean, yeah. we saw what happened last week when he just kept it for twenty-five yards almost, and, and very, um, easy, very easily kept it for twenty-five yards at that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, you know, and with Tyrone Tracy kind of earning that bell cow role, mm-hmm. Devin Singletary, uh, the veteran, even if he gets you know three yards in a cloud of dust, he's also incredibly good in that pass protection. Absolutely. Um, you know, I talked to him. He's like, I used to play nickel. I love blocking. Like, you know, there are some <laughs> players that block 
out of obligation. This is something I have to do as part of my job, but get me the rock. <laughs> yeah, you Devin know. Singletary is like, oh, you mean I get to throw contact? Yeah. Let's go. And he, so he, He's a contact guy. He likes to get in there and mix it up. I like it too. I do too. And it's what you like to see, especially when you've got you know, an injury to your left tackle on the offensive mm -hmm. line and struggles in that situation. Um, you want to see some extra pass protection. Absolutely. All right, Giants fans, you can take your fandom to the next level with a season ticket membership. Stay connected to the club all year round, not just on game days. Memberships are now available for the 2024 season. To learn more about all the exclusive member benefits, visit Giants.com slash tickets. Limited inventory is available. 201-939-4513 is the phone number. Let's head back to the phone lines. Bob in Bloomfield. Bob, you're on Big Blue Kickoff Live hey, with Bob, Howard Cross and Madeline Burke. Hey, what's going on? I uh, just wanted to ask a two-part, a quick two-part question um, for Howard. Okay. Um, Howard, if I go back, right, I've been watching the Giants since the 60s, um, and I go back to the 80s with LT and them, and when they played that three-man front and they stood the four linebackers up, mm -hmm. sometimes Lawrence and, and Carl Banks and the outside backers, they were a yard off the ball. They were moved in and out. With this defensive line, it looks like they play two lines, right? And then the other two guys are on the line, but they look kind of like, like outside linebackers trying to go against these offensive tackles. And in the run game, it just doesn't seem like it works. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but to me, I'm watching the game with my friends, and it's like Burns and Thibodeau and it's Ziagelori look a little small. Well, they, don't look like, they don't look like Michael Strahan. They don't look like guys that play defensive end. They look like stand-up linebackers to me, where I don't know if this scheme works. I mean, I don't think it's the right scheme for the talent that they have. And uh, then, go ahead, I, I'll ask my other one if you can help me there. What did you think, Howard? I'd really like to know what you think about Well, that. you're talking about a 4-3 versus a 3-4. 4-3 is when you have four down linemen, or four guys with their hands on the ground. And essentially, the way, the way they're playing the scheme now with, with Dex and Nacho in the middle, uh, the other two guys on the outside, even though they're calling them linebackers, they're more they're playing in a defensive end uh, type role. They're playing almost a wide nine technique, which holds – holds the linebacker, holds the tight end or the tackle on the inside shoulder as they try to set the edge most of the time when they're playing it. Uh, so it's, it's a different strategy, but a lot of teams have defensive ends that size that, that, that stand on the outside for their speed and to rush the passer. Uh, and the way you get after guys like that, you try to run the ball right at them to try to give them as much pressure as possible. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't because the linebackers feel. Uh, the difference is that when you're talking about you're talking about LT, Pepper Johnson, um, uh, Gary Reasons, or whoever else was in there at the time, and on the other side, Lawrence Taylor. That's totally different. You had Leonard Marshall and, and Big John Washington in the middle, and sometimes Eric Howard or or Eric Dorsey. So you had three uh, guys that weighed over 320 you know, to 340 pounds in the middle, and then you had four linebackers that were literally 250 and up standing on the outside. So they're as big as these defensive ends are now, but they were linebackers, and they were playing the linebacker position, not defensive end. Remember, Lawrence Taylor uh, changed, the, changed the position for life, and they're still looking for another Lawrence Taylor. Carl Banks is one of the top uh, outside linebackers in the history of the NFL, not just in the history of the Giants, in the history of the NFL. So you have guys that are probably two Hall of Famers playing there, and, and Pepper Johnson, who was extraordinarily formidable standing inside who would probably be a, a defensive end or a down lineman now in this in this league as it constitutes today. They were much bigger, much faster guys that we played with in that era. Yeah, and I just, I guess I, what I was wanted you to ask you was, um, but I'm saying, do you think Burns and Thibodeau can get up on those tackles? Do you really think yeah. that's their skill level? They, 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 they're doing a pretty good job of it. They make a lot of tackles from the outside. I see Burns uh, crashing the edge and coming down and getting the, getting the, the right. running back, especially when the running back runs away from him. Same thing with Thibodeau when he's in there. Even Ojolari is, has been able to do it. The, the only fault that would happen to a guy in that position is that he gets a little nosy and, and runs down the line to make that tackle and the quarterback pulls the ball out. If the quarterback pulls the ball out and he's a running quarterback, that's when it, it's a harder job for those guys to do because they have to pay attention to – the quote-unquote quarterback when he comes out or if he pulls the ball out. And then the tackle can have his hand on him a lot longer and he's not just beating him around yeah. the edge. Yeah. I was just thinking that 
my and I'll go to the next one real okay. quick. I was just my thinking just was when you put a third defense alignment, you're occupying their offense alignment, which will freeze Burns up and then they maybe get not have a, a 330 pound tackle on them to, to set them in there to make it, you know, go inside, go outside like those guys used to do. But I understand what you're saying, but to mm-hmm. me, I, I'd rather see three down linemen occupy the tackles, put a true nose. Mm-hmm. Let Burns and Thibodeau use their skill set by by blitzing in, blitzing out. You know, do some different things rather than constantly put them over an offensive tackle. Yeah, it, it's and, just two I different think, two different styles of defense. The three four is meant yeah. to build a wall. The four three is meant to penetrate. All right, and the other thing I had, I know this is a little out in left field, but I just wanted to know as a player, and I and I love watching you play and the way you block and the man you are, and I mean that, not just because I'm talking to you. You guys were a different breed of football players. But anyway, you hear the coach come on every week, and, it, and the fans were sitting there, my friends and me. How many times can you say that this about a pro football player that makes $5 million a year? How can you come on for 12 weeks in a row and say, technique, we got to work on the technique, we got to – how does that ha- – when does the technique get corrected? It, How do you say the same thing week in and week out when the other players on the other team are kicking your butt? Their technique is good. Well, like, it's, it's not good. It's not good. Test? It's not good all across the league. You have to remember that. Like there are certain teams that have great technique, you know, a lot, right. Right? and there are certain teams that don't. Some teams have mastered the, the the way that they practice today. You know, having seven padded practices during the season is not a lot. When back in the old days, they would have us in full pads Wednesday and Thursday. Shorts and helmets, make shorts and shoulder pads on Friday, and even in helmets, even into Saturday. So yeah, we didn't. Sometimes we would even practice on Saturdays, like with pads, because they didn't feel like we had good enough practice during the week. The the way that the rules are today, you know, guys have to really train and, and really study and really try to figure out how the speed of the game, how to work with another player, how their steps are going to mesh as they're as they're stepping, especially on the offensive line side. It's hard to do. As far as receivers go, as far as DBs go, and the guys that are on the skill positions, it's a little de- it's a little easier for them to do it because they're not in contact positions constantly and in, and at conflict conflict constantly. If he's talking about receivers and and stuff like that, that's tough. If he's talking about the whole line, I can under. I mean, I still. I appreciate it, but I still don't understand how they're able to get it together and be able to play together if they hadn't played together for, like, years because it's almost impossible to learn and get technique and get, get trust from guys when you don't know what a, how, how much pressure a guy is going to put on the guy beside you if he's going to, like, be able to drive him off the ball. Is he not? Uh, how's he feeling? What's he look like? You, you don't know until it's game time. Yeah, right. All right. I Like I said, I was just – when you hear so many missed assignments, and after 10 weeks like of playing games, you're still missing the assignments, missing hole gaps, not filling the gaps. That's after got- a while, as a fan, I'm just mm-hmm. saying as a fan, you sit there and go, we don't look like a pro team. It doesn't look like a pro football team. It looks like I watch bad teams like Carolina, and they still look like a pro team. We look like the team went up the field every time Washington. We didn't make a single stop. I don't care. Like that. there's something wrong there, Howard. You could say I, it's hard, I, but no. I, I can tell you that. I can tell you that when the run, when the run game, and they're running the ball up the field, Dexter Lawrence is usually not in the game. Exactly. Right. You know, right. If, if they play, if they play a whole series, and somehow they get a 12 play drive, and they, you know, stuff them at the last moment, and they have to kick a field goal, and then they, and then the Giants' offense goes out and runs four or five plays. It's not enough time. Dex might need a little breather on the next in the next series. You got. It's just. It, it looks different. I mean, I know he's an all-pro player. He's leading the league in sacks and everything, but it just looks different if he's not on the field. And you can you can no, you see it noticeably. They're not running the ball to the edges. They're running the ball up the middle because it's easier yeah. to, to move one of the younger guys around and get up to our carricade and get a body on him. And then the carricade is not – no one's effective because once you make a hole in the middle, it's, it's a hole in the middle. So if Dexter's yeah. in there, it stopped yep. instantly. When he's not in there – it's 50-50, and that's no offense to the other guys. It's just that's just the way it is. Yeah, and that's that's and I agree. Yep, I guess when they're on the field, it just looks like they get it's yeah. not working, and uh, you know, and then you get the fans. I mean, you understand their frustration only because you know the tickets cost a lot of money. The power for them, you buy their shirts. Yeah, you just want to you just want to be in the game. You well, just want to like. 
They don't want the problem is it. the problem is they're in games, they're just not winning games. Yeah, yeah, that's you, true. you know, yeah, being that's in, being true. in games yep. is, is not their issue. They're in every yeah. game. They only had one game, I think, that was like well, a couple of them. Yeah, they were really lopsided. But yeah. most of the games, they're really in. You know, and it's like yeah. you got the the problem is with with the team that today is that you know we always talk about it, it, we used to talk about it takes about four or five plays that will make the difference in the game. Unfortunately, that those four or five plays seem to be happening to us every game, and you just got to make you just got to be on top of your game at all times. You got to heighten senses. You got to do everything you can to get it done. And when you get to the red area, you got to heighten your senses even more. You know, it's like short yards. You got to heighten your senses even more. And for whatever reason, we're just not there yet. And I don't know why. Uh, the, the, you know, it's just they're just not. I don't know. And believe me, coaches screaming and yelling and pressing all the buttons and trying to get it and like and I, and I know that the guys really are trying to win because they know that at any time they be, could be out of a job or be not in the position that they're in if they don't do better and if you're not doing better and you're not putting stuff on as we say film but now it's not film anymore but if you're not putting out good film if you just whole happen to get cut no one else wants to pick you up so you're, everybody's trying to keep their job and to keep grinding. It's not, you know, you, they're just in a bad, they're in a bad stretch. Do you think, though, like, and I'll let you go I'll hang up with this, but um, I, I love you guys. You do a great job, and I, I really enjoy listening to Howard. And like I said, you guys, both of you are one fantastic. Um, just to hang up, do you think sometimes maybe the guys over us are just better? And they're just, we're not our roster. I know you can't talk about the players. I don't mean to put you on the spot. But it just seems like, man, the skins, it just looks like, the, you know, the commanders. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, the Washington commanders. <laughs> they just look like they're better. They look better, bigger, stronger. I mean, uh, they just, you know, maybe, I, I think the ro- the, maybe the roster's just not good enough. I, I know that in this particular case, I, I will tell you that it was uh, that quarterback. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. That kid, that kid is special. So, uh, and he's going to be special playing against the Giants for a, a, a few years, maybe more than a decade. He's just special, and oh. like he has elevated that roster uh, because they weren't that good uh, last year. Uh, the coach and everybody oh. else will tell you that they just uh, they they weren't that good. But the kid and his ability to play, uh, he's the first one in, last one out. Uh, he's not just working; he's working hard. He played last week, coming off of they, they thought you know. A ligament uh, separation in his in his ribs or something, which is extraordinarily painful. Especially for the twist yeah, required yeah. for a quarterback. And it's he, all here. And he came out. He goes, "Hey, if he's playing, I'm playing. Let me in the game." And, and the, he threw they, a hail mary they, to yeah, win it. And to win the game. So yeah, yeah kid is special. Uh, you know, the Giants. Like I, I was hoping that we would get get to him a lot more, sack him a lot more. But you know, if you don't get him instantly, if you can't get a hand on him, he is gone. He's also super fast, very talented kid. Uh-huh. Um, it, you know, I uh, hate to say it, but going to be exciting to watch him. Unfortunately, watch him playing against us is going to be really heartbreaking in, in some cases. Thanks so much for the call, uh, Bob. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, and it's, you know, and like you said, too, he's an incredibly young quarterback. He's making plays. He's decisive with it. And um, it just shows that, you know, I mean, Washington over the years mm-hmm. is piece by piece, and then they find the right piece, and it clicks. And sometimes, you know, you just got to piece by piece build it, and then you hit your tipping point. Um, and for the commanders, they have seemingly, and things have been going their way this well, season. Well, historically, you know, and I'm not not a historian at all, but for historically, I don't think the Giants have great drafts. But every four to five years, they'll have one. Sometimes every ten years, they'll have a super draft. Well, I think this last year's draft was pretty good. I mean, you look at the way that the rookies have been making an impact: Tyler Newbin, Drew mm-hmm. Phillips, Tyrone mm-hmm. Tracy, Malik Neighbors. Yeah, I mean, this, um, like I said, but you know, if you if you stack all the drafts up. This this draft is one that's being like wow. Last year's draft, you have like a couple of players that are really making impacts, and a couple other guys that are like you go in and out. But that's not it. In the draft before that, yeah. even fewer. Well, so, it's uh, hard to it's hard to hit on a draft because you're watching a player and you are watching their skill set in the college game, which is football, but it's as you know like a mm-hmm. different kind of you know a different variation of the game. And there's this great article by Malcolm Gladwell years ago mm-hmm. talking about how challenging it is for a quarterback position. But I think this translates in general. Finding a quarterback to translate from 
college to the NFL is akin to finding somebody who says, hey, you know a lot about, <laughs> let's say, World War II history, but can you teach it? You yeah. know a lot about trigonometry, but can you teach it to another yeah. person? Okay. Just because you know it doesn't mean that skill translates to being able to help other people know it. Just because you play well at the college level doesn't mean that skill translates to playing well at the pro level, which is why I think drafts, it's an inexact science. And, you know, you see some of these players that are touted as generational talent or top picks that are mm -hmm. not in the league anymore or yep. on their fourth or fifth roster still yep. on their rookie deal or, you know... I, I think the draft is is more the, more of just you got to really understand who you're looking at when you're when you're talking about the guys and 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 they've done a good job they drafted the highest guy at every every position every year trying to get the highest ranked guy even at that uh, but it, it sometimes it's more than that you know sometimes it, you just gotta you just gotta know the player in, inside and out and you have to know what he, what he wants what he stands for what what's important to him. And you want to make sure that when you're when you're drafting a guy, and m other people may not like him, but you're bringing a guy that's going to be receptive to to your kind of culture that you're trying to create, and that's the hard thing. Right. And I think it becomes harder and harder now with kids getting nil, kids also transfer portal. So the commitment to to you know sticking it out and and you know being that person isn't the same as it was before. Uh, the kids are coming into the league with with a lot of money <laughs> before yeah. before they get here, so that that's that's different. So the the, the uh, I guess the motivation of the almighty dollar dollar isn't as as great as it used to be. Uh, so it's it's just interesting to see how the you know the psyche and and how these guys are going to coaches all over the league are going to be able to bring these kids in and how these kids are going to be able to adapt because they won't be able to like five years before those kids are the kids that are going to be running our league well and it just shows i mean we talk about this all the time what's your why what's your why why do you play the game yeah. if it's for the almighty dollar you're not going to go that far if it's mm -hmm. for love of the game and mm -hmm. wanting to be great and, and falling in love with the process of becoming great i mean Jaden daniels has evolved so much just midway through his rookie season we talk about getting him down was so hard week two mm -hmm. he was elusive they still got to him five times could yeah. have been six Week nine, they can't get him down at all. They don't get to him at all in the pass pressure. But he's also a kid. You know, talking to some people with Washington, you hear about the adage of, oh, first one in the building, last yeah, one to leave, all that him. kind of stuff. Not only is he the first one in the building, he's hours before. This man gets in the building at 4 a.m. on a regular basis. Yeah, going to bed early, getting up early. To get the, in the he, building, he is ready 4 a.m., go. going to the gym, watching your film, getting your lift and all that kind of stuff before anyone else has even arrived. Yep. And the fact that the, he is consistently that dedicated to the process mm -hmm is what you need like it's not just about you know talent and skill and what you do on Lip Saturdays service. and oh your <laughs> confidence in your own play or mm -hmm. your understanding of the game it's about how much work you're putting in to continue to elevate and continue to evolve and continue to grow um, because you're never at the top of the game and if you are there's always somebody nipping at your heels trying to come behind you I always tell people this when they're, when they're playing a sport and, and even anything you, you know it from golf even yeah. you're never the same two days in a row. Mm -mm. So you can only try to get better, but there's a chance that something might happen, you might be a little worse. But you're always trying to get better, and that's what he's doing mm -hmm. by doing all that. He's, he realizes I'm never the same two days in a row. I'm never this two days in a row. So he's coming in to prep, to get himself ready so he can stay off some of the things that would like hold him back. And that's right. that's what's impressive. And I, I tell my son that even to this very day. Like, you're never the same two days in a row. You can't just, you know, <laughs> sink a 20-foot putt and celebrate <laughs> like Steph Curry and lay on that uh, like no. like this one does. You no, got to get back out there and you continue get to back work out there and keep, Continue to hit that grind. Because let me tell you, I I will make one good shot, and I will I will tell you about it for the rest of the afternoon. The out there dancing. <laughs> like, yeah, you did that good, girl. But you know what? You got you to spark joy a little bit. Yes, absolutely. Um, Giants fans, the Giants official connected TV streaming app, Giants TV, brings original video content and game highlights on demand and direct to Big Blue fans. Giants TV is free on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire TV, and on the Giants mobile app. 201-939-4513 is the phone number. As we head back to the phone lines, RJ in Georgia, you're on Big Blue Kickoff Live with Madeline Burke and Howard Cross. What's up, RJ? Hey, how you doing, fellas? I'm doing good. Uh, Howard, I'm sorry. Madeline, <laughs> how you guys doing? Very good. Good, good. I apologize for that. No, no. Uh, listen, All good. I, I, uh, I am just a dejected fan. You know, I don't know what the, what the heck is going on with this team. I watch them Sunday, Thursday, Monday night, and it's just nothing changes. 
a wide receiving core. You can't get anything out of them. Uh, our defense, you know, it, it shows up at times. It's, it's just frustrating. And, it's, you know, I, I try to hang in there. I never miss a game. I'm, I'm a true, true blue fan. But, but, damn, man, something has got to change. I mean, our coaching staff earlier in the year, there was praising that one of the best coaching staff we put together and, and nothing, nothing is changing. Nothing but L. When, when will all of this stuff end? And then Giants start playing Giants football. Well, you know, they, first they're going to, as they get through this season, finish working through this season, I think they're going to get a little bit better as they go. But it's it just takes it's going to take more time. They need they need a they need a, one or two more linemen. They need another receiver. They need another big guy in the middle to be beside Dex. Not nothing wrong with Nacho or anything, but another big guy that can be as as as, as valuable as Dex is, but it, as penetrating as unstoppable. They need they need two people there. All right, so they need they need a number one corner. Uh, I, I love Banks. Banks has not been the number one corner that we thought he was going to be last year, but he he's playing pretty good. But he's going to catch the number one receiver week in and week out. If you get another guy that's a quote unquote number one corner on the field, which Flock could develop into that guy, then all of a sudden the defense looks a lot better. Offensively, like I said, the biggest thing I see with the offense is that once you know. Uh, Thomas left. We had a, a week of just people letting people go on Daniel. Now that we've gotten guys back, the only thing that's really holding them back is they got to figure out a way. And I, and I said this before, well, at, early in the show: you got to stop making silly penalties. You got to have these, these 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 procedure penalties have to just disappear. Uh, and and that's you know you got to run over, get yourself set, get ready to go. That's one. You got to catch the ball. You can't. Uh, it, the ball is so precious when it's coming to guys. We had few. We're probably one of the top teams in the league in drops. We got to catch the ball, <laughs> and and if they catch the ball, games look different. W's come, but if they're not catching the ball consistently, and and if they keep having these weird, strange penalties, um, you know, uh, thirty yard, thirty yard reception, uh, legal man downfield, like how? Right. How, right. How do you get? That. How do you get downfield? Like like was he blocking someone? Well, he's more than yard downfield, because and, they're, and it's because they're running the RPO. They run the RPO. You're blocking. You're going up to the second level to block the linebacker, and he throws the ball. You're downfield. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I <laughs> you know I I, I I come to the home game. Mm-hmm. You see the fan. You see the fan base. They're out in the parking lot tailgating. Everybody is amped up, pumped up. I mean, it's just like a joy to see. And then we get inside that damn stadium, and it's just. Nothing but an L, and it's it's just that has to stop, man. Yeah, well, they they have to I, stop. I, I would, season I, ticket season man. ticket holders are just going to say, you know what, I'm not even going to come to the game anymore. Well, I can tell you this. They look a lot better than I thought they were going to be looking at this point in the season because some different guys were going out of the games and stuff, not not having a Thibodeau, not having, you know, a Thomas, not having, you know, at, this, at some point some cornerbacks in and out of the game. I'm like, man, this could be rough. And the guys kind of picked it up and started playing better. So uh, the problem is that they got to find a way, you know, to have both sides, you know, O and D, play good at the same time. The offense played pretty good this week. The defense was struggled. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the right. uh, the the play where Daniel gets sacked that was a, was a play that the tackle just didn't block his guy and just let him go, and he, and he causes a fumble. Right, the ball's bouncing on the ground. The officials blow the whistle. No one's touched the ball. Yeah, that was a weird one too. <laughs> and I would love to have a conversation with somebody because it's like, how did how did they end up giving the ball to yeah, Washington? The, the, I mean, yeah, yeah. The, the the officials blow the whistle like they say. It's a, the uh, the forward pass was whatever. Then they do the said it was an incomplete pass. An incomplete and pass. Being, the whistle. Fumble. Yeah, but you can't you you can't do it that way. But they yeah. that's how it's done. Yeah. If they blow the and, whistle, and it's I a have, dead ball. Right, and I I have a final. I have I'll say one more thing, and then I'll I'll take it off the air. And I mm-hmm. appreciate you guys uh, getting me on. I'm, I'm grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just want the Giants. Years ago, me and my partner used to say the Giants are the 49 nicest guys on the field. Now it's 53. <laughs> my message, my message to the Giants is: Can you stop being nice and just play good, tough-nosed Giants football so we can get back into the winning ways? That's all I have to say. I'll take it off the air. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much, RJ. You too. 
I think that, you know, I understand his frustration in that aspect and everything, but I see that not just in, in Giants football, but across the league. Yeah. The, the, the sharing of jerseys, the hugging and kissing and all that stuff. I'm, I'm so curious as to where that came from and if it ever if it ever is going to stop. Uh, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't mind the sharing the jerseys and stuff like that. Game recognized game. If you're going up against a player that you no. admire and all that kind of stuff Absolutely not. after the game, I think it's kind of cool. You go, like, you see a lot of these guys with these collections of <laughs> jerseys of I got to play against this guy I got to play against that guy and all this kind of stuff and we have this mutual respect for each other's greatness between no. the wit like between the lines no. uh, during the game yeah you should want to rip its head off but no I think like it's cool if I was you know lucky enough to play against Howard Cross I'd be like hey man can I get your jersey and hang it up in my living room to so, just remind my grandkids uh, I got to play against Howard Cross I'm, I'm gonna name drop a little bit I, I play golf with Starks and Oakley yeah. And they asked me, like, what is with the jersey swapping? He goes, I've never wanted another guy's jersey that I can paint them with. I was like, I get it. <laughs> so It's an expensive habit, too. You know, if you if you swap jerseys, you got to pay for it. You got to buy it. Because if you're giving it away, the the team isn't just going to be like, oh, okay, cool. We'll replace it. No, no, no. You got to replace it. You got to no. pay for it. Absolutely so every not. time you're swapping jerseys and giving somebody else your <laughs> your threads, you're buying it. <laughs> I mean, he's got Howard so upset. He's choking on himself I'm right like, here. So like, no, he's, you know, he's beside himself. Not. Just the blasphemy of, oh my gosh. Could not to this day. Like, but I think absolutely not. I think it's not because if you're playing the game, I, I, I think from my perspective, you can play the game and also be a fan of the game and an admirer of the greats in the game and an admirer of that. And if you're, you know, looking at, wow, this is a really incredible player and I got to go up against him, I don't mind it. Or, you know, maybe you're just like, hey, this is a guy that I played ball with when we were five and now we're both in the league together. Look at how far we've come. Let's trade jerseys or something like that, you know? No. I mean, it's such a small world, Howard. Like, you know, these guys go way back. And just because you're on another team doesn't mean you haven't known each other your entire lives. Again, no. <laughs> I right. can't do it. All right. <laughs> I can't. I don't That's going to be a no for you, dog. That's a no, dog. I'm like, seriously, like, we out there battling. I don't want to yeah. come come home, you done stepped on my hand during the game, and I'm looking at your jersey in a frame. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, true. No, mm -mm. yeah, absolutely true. not. You done poked me in the eye or something. And well, I okay, look at but if it's offense, offense, right? If you're changing no, jerseys with another tight end, they didn't poke not. you in the eye because they weren't on the field with you. Well, I, I don't want to come in and look at your jersey. They didn't throw you seven passes. I got one. No, I don't want to see that. What if you got seven passes and he got one? I'm still not giving him my jersey. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. You know, my, how the turntables, things oh, change over God, time, man. and that's how I it guess, goes. I guess I'm a bad sport. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. You're just, you know what? No. You just, <laughs> you're just heavy into the Kendrick. They're not like us, you know? Yeah, They're not like us. They definitely um, not. <laughs> Howard, you fly out with the team tomorrow night? Yes, I do. Are you packed? Nope, I'm going home to pack right after this. Right after this, yes, okay. You ready? What What are your expectations? What are you most looking forward to about the trip to Germany, other than the game? Uh, I have no idea. I might, they have given us a full schedule, a slate of things that we're going to be doing, uh, experiences with fans, and enjoying. I'm just trying to make sure I get the weather right because mm -hmm. I'm just going to be outside. I think it's going to be in the 40s. A little chilly. A little chilly. So I don't know if I can bring my heated vest from country to country because of that little battery. So. I got to be a little careful with all this stuff. <laughs> well, they have batteries in Germany. Why couldn't you bring it? Oh, because of the, the flight? Mm -hmm. I don't know how these things work. See, see, see. Well, all right. Get, get some of those com like. Confiscate my stuff. Hand warmers <laughs> or whatever, all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm going to sure put it all in my carry on bag. So if, if they look at it, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll let me know then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You'll be well prepared for uh, Sunday. What time? Okay, so 9.30 a.m. So it's what, a one thirty. Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Three yeah. thirty in the afternoon that time. Mm -hmm. Um, that'll be a good one. What are your final thoughts for what what Giants need to focus on to get the win this week? This week, I think that this final thought says again: no, no, no illegal procedure penalties. Yeah. Please stop jumping off sides or being downfield if you can. Uh, if you can do that and eliminate, you know, if they if they can go to the game with three penalties. That's that's a lot. Keep you know. a clean sheet. Keep yeah. a clean sheet. That's one. N number two, uh, continue to run the ball. Yeah. I think if you run the ball, good things happen, and I think that'll be that'll be helpful for him. Would love to see a you know, I would I would love to see Hyatt show up in the game. 
I would. I'd love, you know, if, it's definitely if Slayton's not playing, I'd definitely love to see Hyatt to get a little burn and get a, get some plays. From a defensive standpoint, three and outs. Like, you know, get them off the field. Get yourself off the field so you can be rested so you don't have to keep rotating everybody. I know you want to rotate and get people, keep people fresh, but if you can get them off the field sooner, get them off the field sooner. Yeah, and again and with – I'd love to see a turnover. Let's see us get a in in the Giants' favor. Yeah, you got to be specific with these manifestations, you, you know, Cross. You I mean, know, you I mean, can't I, be. I, they haven't had what one turnover this year, maybe two. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so that's that. I'd love to see them get a couple turnovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the defense can put them in a short field position, that'd Absolute, be great. And that again, would be wonderful. Yep. Slayton in concussion protocol, uncertain if he will travel. Um, unclear again. Brian Dable said earlier today that he is not at the same point that Tyrone Tracy was in returning from the yeah. concussion protocol at this point last week. Um, so Slayton will be a big question mark, but the Giants will be traveling with their entire practice squad as well to Germany. So, kind of roster moves and all that remaining up in the air as yes. they leave Thursday night. They'll be over there playing Sunday again. So we'll keep you posted with all the latest on what's going on. In week 10, Giants, Panthers, Munich, Germany. Last one before the bye. A much needed bye to refresh and hit the home stretch of the regular season. Okay. Okay. I look forward to it. Well, and that will do it for our show today on a Wednesday edition of Big Blue Kickoff Live, brought to you by Cadillac, the official luxury vehicle of the New York football Giants. Thanks so much for being with us. He's Howard Cross. I'm Madeline Burke. BBKL is part of the Giants podcast platforms everywhere and Giants.com slash podcasts. Have a great one.